Hi everyone and welcome to another review here on Theme Park Worldwide. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on Furious Baco, a wing coaster that's located at Port Aventura World in Spain. Now Furious Baco opened in 2007 and was manufactured by Intamin. What makes this ride so special is the fact that it was actually the only one of this style of Intamin wing coaster to be built. After this ride Intamin completely changed their design for the wing coaster with future models and people who've been on Furious Baco might be thinking yes I can see why they did that this ride has got quite a reputation for being pretty rough and I've said it myself over the years it is quite a rough coaster but as you're going to find out in this review it might be rough but I've got a bit of a soft spot for it there's something about Furious Baco that I absolutely love the theme of it the ride experience there's just something about it that I find really unique and the fact that it's the only one of that style of Intamin wing coasters to be built um, you know what I'm quite glad it's kept that because um, this ride is a little bit crazy and the theme's crazy the ride's crazy let's get straight into it so as always with these reviews I like to talk a bit about the location within the park now Furious Baco um, you can't miss this one literally you head into Port Aventura Park uh, you walk around the Mediterranean themed area which is beautiful um, all the Spanish buildings there's flowers out everywhere lots of different al fresco dining options really nice area of the park and no matter where you want to go at Port Aventura Park you have to walk right past Furious Baco's entrance and actually underneath the coaster you can't miss it it's got a bright blue track with like a cream support structure but it fits in beautifully with the Mediterranean area Bear in mind that the park opened back in 1995, um, but this coaster wasn't added until 2007. I can't really imagine Mediterranean without it now. It just fits in beautifully um, with that finale that comes right over the water and up into the brake run. Now, you make your way to the entrance of this ride. You've got all these lovely flowers all out the front of it. You've got the ride's logo, which is certainly interesting. It doesn't give too much away about the theme. And then you have to actually climb up a few steps um, to get into the queue line and the queue line actually starts to make its way up a bit of a hill and you're actually walking through a vineyard and that's what kind of all adds to the theme of this ride because let's face it the theme of Furious Baco um, is very strange and I'll explain that in just a moment but you're walking up um, through the, there's a cattle pen queue line actually in the vineyard I remember going a year after it opened and waiting in all of that cattle pen queue line for about three and a half hours luckily it doesn't tend to get that big of a queue all the way down there these days but it's it's still a very popular ride especially at the start and end of the day because of the location everybody has to walk past it to get in and everybody has to walk past it to get out so you're best hitting it up sort of in the middle of the day um, or in the afternoon so yes you, you've walked up you've got some little covered areas of the queue line as well and then you've got this ginormous palm tree which is stunning to look at um, and then the, the station building which is kind of an open station it's got some nice archways the architecture is very Spanish that Mediterranean feel uh, that it's got there what you kind of expect really uh, from a themed area in Spain it's absolutely gorgeous you then make your way into the indoor part of the queue line where you're really starting to think the theme for this is strange you've got this um, these bottles that are kind of cycling round on this motor and then you make your way into a large indoor cattle pen queue it's Port Aventura so there's going to be some cattle pens of course uh, but inside there you've got all these cabinets that have got pieces of machinery in and you're thinking this is all very strange and then once you've made it through that cattle pen um, you go upstairs uh, kind of a bit of a ramp into another cattle pen all under cover this part and you need it in the Spanish heat especially in the summer and what's really interesting with this is you've got like these sets of cogs that spin round now um, they actually used to uh, you have to spin it round to, to walk through um, near the entrance which was really good they actually changed that a few years ago and took some of that out so it stays at the side but yeah when it opened you had to actually push um, this uh, wooden beam around which would spin the cogs which was quite cool you can still do that effect I believe but um, now you don't have to do it to walk through and then you arrive to this huge open station and this is the point now where I'm going to explain the theme for those of you that aren't aware of it you might have even been on this ride and struggled to work out the theme I thought that when I first went on it but let me explain the theme thanks to Port Aventura's website and their official way of uh, what Furious Baco exactly is so 
basically you've got this professor um, that's preparing to launch his new grape collecting machine and of course you go through this vineyard he's making wine basically so that's why you go through all this vineyard all the grapes and he's preparing to launch this um, grape collecting machine the footage I'm showing you here by the way is actually from the onboard pre-show uh, but more about that shortly along with that um, he's got his assistant which is a monkey who actually pulled the wrong lever causing the contraption to go out of control and then the train to catapult so that's the theme behind this it's a Spanish vineyard where you've got all of the grapes and he's creating this new machine to help collect grapes that's the theme for this Intamin wing coaster how very strange but I love it um, let's talk about the station then so like I say it's kind of open um, but you have got a roof and it's got walls kind of part way up in there however you can see out you get some stunning views actually from the station and you look up and you can actually see a monkey swinging side to side with the sound effect playing which is quite cool and then of course you're greeted by the train right in front of you um, and the train design on this is certainly very different because there's no other roller coaster trains like this in the world like I say this is the only one that Intamin made of this style now 24 riders can be seated on Furious Baco um, now the six rows two riders um, on each side so it's four per row uh, but it's two on each wing and this is where it differs compared to the likes of a B&M wing coaster uh, where of course you're familiar with you actually load on both sides don't you like if you're on the other wing you'll actually climb over the track over uh, over some steps uh, to the other side of the station not with how Intamin designed this and of course some of their other wing coasters but um, with this you actually um, walk over the train which I find very strange that the way it's been designed like that uh, you actually walk over the train to get to the other side which um, is a bit of a trip hazard but you've got the barrels like in the middle of the train and part of them's flat and then you can walk over them so very interesting now it's actually got an over the shoulder restraint um, in place um, with a click fix seat belt as well on there um, I don't find the restraints to be too uncomfortable to be honest I don't really feel like that's the main issues with the ride I feel like the train is part of the problem but not so much that and I'll explain that a little bit later in my review about the train design and how I feel like that affects the ride experience uh, but like I say what's great with this is there's no floor under you whether you're on the inner part of the wing or the outer um, every seat on this ride all 24 riders you are um, your legs are dangling freely on this ride which is fantastic but yeah it's very strange how you cross over into the middle this has actually varied over the past few years. There were some double doors when this opened, big wooden doors that used to open, then close. So you didn't actually see the launch taking place. That was switched off, I believe, for years and years. And then a few years ago, they actually put in a roller door now, what lifts up and down. Um, so basically that lifts up, you are dispatched, and off you go to start your experience on Furious Baco. So it's kind of that mysterious element, and that adds to the overall thing. There's actually no place where you can watch the launch. There's nowhere in the park where you can see the launch take place not from ground level anyway maybe from up higher on a ride but um, not so much from down on the on the park so you know a lot of parks actually put in viewing areas don't they for the launches not with Furious Baco um, you wouldn't even know it was a launch coaster unless you're an enthusiast or um, you know you'd maybe be on it before but um, yeah it's a bit of a mystery with this but you make it to this onboard pre-show where you are greeted by the professor on a couple of screens which are up there above you now as soon as you move in you can see him tweaking with this machine his pet monkey actually comes cycling in when it's all working um, from the side and what actually happens is here um, lots of different sound effects building up that storyline um, and then of course um, he kind of tells his monkey um, to kind of oh hang on a minute wait there um, don't touch anything however the monkey goes on to touch this lever the professor then goes flying off the screen to these cogs on the right hand side what starts spinning round and you actually see the professor spinning round and he's going whoa on the audio um, and then at this point your actual the actual train moves forward slightly and then backwards I imagine that's just as it's kind of um, engaging um, onto that catch car what's of course is going to pull it forwards um, on the launch but um, yeah it's all very dramatic uh, with the pre-show video and you can see that here in high quality uh, exactly what you're seeing it's very strange 
strange, but I do love it. And then at that point, um, the wine actually then starts to fill up on the screens and you can actually see it raising up, raising up. And that is the point when you go. So there's no like three, two, one countdown or anything like that. Um, it's just the, the anticipation. You think you see all this go wrong and then off you go, launching straight out um, from zero to 83.9 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. And the launch on Furious Backo is absolutely incredible. It's not actually a flat launch. It's got a bit of an incline onto it, which is great. And it's just so forceful. Like that launch is absolutely incredible. In fact, it's one of my favorite launches, especially on the front row, um, because you're kind of in an air-conditioned building where the pre-show is. And in the summer, the heat just hits you when you go out there. Uh, and the fact it's hidden, it's so mysterious. I do really like that. Um, now, this is where I want to talk more about the train design. With this, it's a rough ride. Like, th th there's no doubt about it. No, no matter where you sat, it's a rough ride. There's some seats where it's more comfortable. I'd say the further you are towards the front, the more comfortable it is. If you're on the front inner seat um, of the wing, then yes, it is more comfortable than the back outer, for example. A lot more comfortable. Now, one of the reasons why I think Intamin have not built another one of these is due to that train design. And I really feel like that's why it affects the ride experience. Like I said before, you actually have to cross over the middle to get onto the other side. And also when you're offline, at the end of the ride, you have to cross over the barrel. So I find it really interesting how Intamin actually designed this. If you look at the B&M wing coasters, you kind of sit in more at the side of the track. Like you can't see the other riders on the other side because you are next to the track. Um, so say, you know, this is the track just here, you're, you're sitting down here. On the Intamin wing coaster, Furious Backer, you're actually sitting above the track just here. And I know they've kind of gone on to do that with their other uh, wing coasters too, but it, it's a lot better design than how Furious Backer was. You are pretty high up. And um, I, I feel like that is why this ride is so rough because you're not just on a wing, but you're also higher up than the track on this side instead of being lower and next to it. Um, I think that's why there's so many issues with it. Um, but still, once you get to the end of that absolutely fantastic launch, um, you then get some brilliant air time no matter where you sat but especially on the back row you get some brilliant airtime because of course the launch is on this angle and then it dips down uh, when you actually go down into some trenches at this point they're not covered over they're open trenches but there's no theming around there but they can kind of get away with it you're kind of in this vineyard they've got all them um, plants all around still but to be honest, at this point, you've been bashed about that much that you don't really care what you're looking at. Um, you bank round to the right-hand side before turning slightly left again through a tunnel, bog-standard concrete tunnel. Why they didn't just theme that up, put some barrels in there or something, I don't know. But you go through this tunnel. It's a figure of eight layout with Furious Backo as well. So you're going through S-Bends on a figure of eight. Um, and it's not a very tall ride either. It's very low to the ground. It co covers the terrain pretty much. Um, and then, of course, you start to lift up a little bit um, before banking round to the left and into the one inversion on this ride, which is an inline twist to the left. And this is brilliant because you get a fantastic amount of uh, just seeing all these bushes underneath you and it's just whizzing past you at the side. Uh, the near misses on this, head choppers are incredible. In fact, I've had my hands up on there before and I've actually touched uh, branches before on the ground. Like That is how close you are. I've touched some of the, uh, the vineyards there. Sorry, Professor, I do apologize. Uh, oh, you can't worry about it now. He's been crushed by the machine in the pre-show. Um, but yeah, uh, you go into that, which is brilliant, especially if you are sat on the left-hand side because like I say, you really get swung down um, to, 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 to the side. Um, but which, no, well, which side you're on, it's great, but I do prefer it on the left um, just because of that. I just prefer going into it that way. On the right, it's great and you get more of a flip round, but it's just something about being on the left that I enjoy the most um, about that. Following on from that, you sort of drop down to the left into the big finale of the ride. It's not a long layout, um, but you've got to think with the speed you go in as well, the fact that it doesn't really have loads of massive drops and it's only got one inversion, it keeps up the pace. Like, it comes into their brakes with some speed at the end. So because it's quite a terrain ride, um, then yeah, you know, it keeps up that pace. So it's still going really fast. So as much as it is quite a short layout, um, it's still not one of the shortest track lengths out there. Um, it's more the fact you're going through it at some pace, some speed. But you go into this beautiful section, which is over the water, um, and then it banks round to the left. Like I say, if you're on the left-hand side, um, you can fit, kind of put your hand out and feel like you can touch the water. You can't touch it, but it feels just nice and refreshing, getting the wind um, blowing onto your face. And then you're up into the brake run, and one of the worst transitions into a brake run ever. Like, literally, you're on that angle, and then it's boom, straight away. And you actually, when you're standing off-ride watching Furious Backo, you see the train just jolt to the side as it goes into the brake. 
break room. And then of course you've made it and you make your way um, into the station area. There used to actually be a separate offload point um, for Furious Backo, but now they just use the same area. Um, it used to run three trains too, now it only runs two. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's amazing how these rides are designed and things change over the years. Um, but yeah, with it getting round the circuit so quick, they probably just couldn't get the trains out there quick enough. So two um, is the best sort of option for them. It wouldn't benefit it running on three because you'd always have three mostly stacked up um, whilst of course you know you've got one going round um, but most of the time you still have three there uh, stacked up really just because of how um, quick the ride is and how slow the throughputs are there so I can kind of understand why they just run it on the two now um, but there you go that's Furious Backo like I say I do feel like the train design um, does kind of d d take away from the experience a little bit the fact that you know it does make it so rough but then it leads me on to think, is that part of why people love this ride? And the public really enjoy Furious Backo. I do really like it. Yes, it can be really rough and uncomfortable. Um, on the back row sometimes, especially on the wing, right on the outside, it can be unbearable. However, it's still a very unique ride. It's the only one of its type to have been built of that style that Intamin did. They went on and changed the wing coaster design and I'm glad they did. However, um, I do still like Furious Backo and what they did with it and the theme around this ride the location is fantastic one thing i just need to mention as well about this is the soundtrack i absolutely adore the soundtrack it's like uh, all these bells ringing and bottles sort of banging together it's a very interesting soundtrack if you get the chance to listen to it have a listen it's a great soundtrack and just imagine walking up that queue line hearing that and hearing the screams of terror of people enjoying this rough ride on the intermin wing coaster and then yeah that imagine the feel that you're at port aventura with that but uh, there you go have you been on Furious Backo? I'd love to know down below in the video comments. Maybe you think I'm absolutely mad enjoying this ride, or maybe you kind of think, you know what? I agree with Sean. It's a great coaster. It's forceful. It's intense. Um, it's got a fantastic inversion with a great near miss element. It's an overall great ride. Yes, it is uncomfortable, um, but that's part of the experience, isn't it? Or I'd like to think so anyway. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the video comments. Check out our many other reviews here on Theme Park Worldwide. And of course, we film brand new videos every single day here on the channel. Thanks for joining me, Sean Sandbrook, reviewing Furious Back Out at Port Aventura World. And that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you soon.